In every branch of knowledge, the progress is proportional to the amount of facts on which to build, and therefore to the facility of obtaining data. I think men of science, as well as other men, need to learn from Christ, and I think Christians, whose minds are scientific, are bound to study science that their view of the glory of God may be as extensive as their being is capable. But I think that the results which each man arrives at in his attempts to harmonize his science with his Christianity ought not to be regarded as having any significance except to the man himself, and to him only for a time and should not receive the stamp of a society. Science is incompetent to reason upon the creation of matter itself out of nothing. We have reached the utmost limit of our thinking faculties when we have admitted that because matter cannot be eternal and self-existent, it must have been created. It is a universal condition of the enjoyable that the mind must believe in the existence of a law and yet have a mystery to move about in. At quite uncertain times and places, the atoms left their heavenly path and by fortuitous embraces engendered all that being hath. And though they seem to cling together, and form associations here, yet soon or later they burst their tether, and through the depths of space career. Faraday is, and must always remain, the father of that enlarged science of electromagnetism. The second law of thermodynamics has the same degree of truth as the statement that if you throw a tumbler full of water into the sea, you cannot get the same tumbler full of water out again. It is of great advantage to the student of any subject to read the original memoirs on that subject, for science is always most completely assimilated when it is in the nascent state. Mathematicians may flatter themselves that they possess new ideas which mere human language is as yet unable to express. All the mathematical sciences are founded on relations between physical laws and laws of numbers. In speaking of the energy of the field, however, I wish to be understood literally. All energy is the same as mechanical energy, whether it exists in the form of motion, or in that of elasticity, or in any other form. The energy in electromagnetic phenomena is mechanical energy. Jin a body meet a body, flying through the air. Jin a body hit a body. Will it fly, and where? I have also a paper afloat with an electromagnetic theory of light, which, till I am convinced to the contrary, I hold to be great guns. The only laws of matter are those that our minds must fabricate, and the only laws of mind are fabricated for it by matter. Thoroughly conscious ignorance is the prelude to every real advance in science. The world may be utterly crazy, and life may be labor in vain, but I'd rather be silly than lazy, and would not quit life for its pain. Heat may be generated and destroyed by certain processes, 
and this shows that heat is not a substance. The experimental investigation by which Ampere established the law of the mechanical action between electric currents is one of the most brilliant achievements in science. The whole theory and experiment seems as if it had helped, full-grown and full-armed, from the brain of the Newton of electricity. It is perfect in form and unassailable in accuracy, and it is summed up in a formula from which all the phenomena may be deduced and which must always remain the cardinal formula of electrodynamics. The theory I propose may therefore be called a theory of the electromagnetic field because it has to do with the space in the neighborhood of the electric or magnetic bodies, and it may be called a dynamical theory because it assumes that in the space there is matter in motion by which the observed electromagnetic phenomena are produced. We can scarcely avoid the inference that light consists in the transverse undulations of the same medium which is the cause of electric and magnetic phenomena. The true logic for this world is the calculus of probabilities, which takes account of the magnitude of the probability. An experiment, like every other event which takes place, is a natural phenomenon. But in a scientific experiment, the circumstances are so arranged that the relations between a particular set of phenomena may be studied to the best advantage. Color as perceived by us is a function of three independent variables. At least three are, I think, sufficient, but time will show if I thrive. The mathematical difficulties of the theory of rotation arise chiefly from the want of geometrical illustrations and sensible images by which we might fix the results of analysis in our minds. I have looked into most philosophical systems and I have seen that none will work without God. In the heavens we discover stars by their light and by their light alone. The sole evidence of the existence of these distant worlds, that each of them is built up of molecules of the same kinds we find on Earth. A molecule of hydrogen, for example, whether in Sirius or Arcturus, executes its vibrations in precisely the same time. Each molecule, therefore, throughout the universe bears impressed upon it the stamp of a metric system as distinctly as does the meter of the archives at Paris or the royal cubit of the Temple of Karnak. The chief philosophical value of physics is that it gives the mind something distinct to lay hold of, which if you don't, Nature at once tells you, you are wrong. It was a great step in science when men became convinced that in order to understand the nature of things, they must begin by asking, not whether a thing is good or bad, noxious or beneficial, but of what kind it is, and how much is there of it. Quality and quantity were then first recognized as the primary features to be observed in scientific inquiry. Ampere was the Newton of electricity. 
happiness and misery must inevitably increase with the increasing power and knowledge. In fact, whenever energy is transmitted from one body to another in time, there must be a medium or substance in which the energy exists after it leaves one body and before it reaches the other. And if we admit this medium as an hypothesis, I think it ought to occupy a prominent place in our investigations, and that we ought to endeavor to construct a mental representation of all the details of its action. And this has been my constant aim in this treatise. The student who uses homemade apparatus, which is always going wrong, often learns more than one who has the use of carefully adjusted instruments, to which he is apt to trust and which he dares not take to pieces. All the mathematical sciences are founded on relations between physical laws and laws of numbers, so that the aim of exact science is to reduce the problems of nature to the determination of quantities by operations with numbers. The vast interplanetary and vast interstellar regions will no longer be regarded as waste places in the universe. We shall find them to be already full of this wonderful medium, so full that no human power can remove it from the smallest portion of space or produce the slightest flaw in its infinite continuity. Science appears to us with a very different aspect after we have found out that it is not in lecture rooms only, and by means of the electric light projected on a screen, that we may witness physical phenomena, but that we may find illustrations of the highest doctrines of science in games and gymnastics, in traveling by land and by water, in storms of the air and of the sea, and wherever there is matter in motion.